Today we're going to make storage for all my Cricut Joy materials. So a while back, Cricut reached out to me. Beep beep. And they were like, hey bro, would you like us to sponsor a video for you? And I was like, absolutely I would. I've been intrigued by their machines for a while now, but I'd never used one personally until they sent me this little bundle of joy. If you're not familiar with the Cricut family, this is like a tiny version of a CNC. It takes an image and cuts or draws it onto your material. The Cricut Joy is the smallest smart cutting machine ever, which also makes it the most portable ever. It's ready to go when you are. It has a wonderfully minimalist design, which means that when you're not using it, it can happily nest anywhere you want to place it. I'm usually a bit put off by anything in the world of tech because I just don't understand it, but this little guy doesn't even have buttons. Plug it in and it's ready to go. All the work is done through your computer or smartphone, and even that can't really be described as work. It was easy enough for me to start making things right out of the box. And speaking of boxes, I got really excited about all the options I had ahead of me, so I gotta make some storage. I knew that I wanted the finish piece to be black and to have copper accents, but that was pretty much all I knew. I measured all the things that would go into this box cabinet thingy, and I just went for it. I used the track saw that my buddy Mike from Modern Builds made, and I cut down a sheet of 8 inch plywood. This will end up being the bottom and the top of the shelves. So okay if I do this here, where should I take it outside? Do what where? I really like using a track saw because while we do have a table saw, there's no in-feed and out-feed, and it's really hard for me to maneuver a full sheet of plywood on or off of it, and also just pushing it across the top. He's such a ham. Clamping the track down will give me a more accurate cut, but the best clamps are the ones that you have on you. and. My foot clamps go with me everywhere I go. I had to get a little bit creative with the 3 quarter inch plywood because I didn't have enough room, so I used the washing machine to hold it up on one end. The 3 quarter inch plywood will provide structure and something to actually screw into when I make the walls and the back of the shelves and drawer. I had to cut three pieces that were only two inches wide, so I used this cut off piece of plywood to keep the track level. I used the chop saw to cut them down to length. I had intended to shoot a couple different angles, but to be honest, this backlit sunset with sawdust? I mean, come on, let's just watch that for a little bit. I used 120 grit sandpaper to break the edges of all the pieces. That way nothing will splinter and come up. I've never used ink to stain anything but my clothes and hands, but this was actually a really easy way to make this wood completely black. I just poured a little bit on top and used a clean cotton rag that had very little lint to rub it in. While I'm waiting for that to dry, deciding what my first project would be was more difficult than actually making it. There are so many options, from labels to cards and vinyl transfers to iron-ons. But then it struck me. 
the first thing I made was me, or rather, a vinyl cut of me as River, as me. One thing that is unique to the Cricut Joy is their smart vinyl. Vinyl that can be cut without a mat. You heard me right. Remember how I said this machine was the most portable? One, two, three, go. I finished the plywood in three steps. First, I sprayed it with a clear matte enamel. Because the ink I used is water-based, it raised the grain of the wood and it leaves me with a texture that I do not like. But after spraying it with the enamel, I used a cotton rag to burnish the wood and it made it really smooth. You cannot tell in this video. To really seal in the color and protect the wood and the things that I would put on the shelf, my step three was putting on a coat of polycrylic. This was the moment when I realized I had not cut enough pieces. And this is the moment when I just decided to go for it anyways. I wasn't really sure what kind of glue I should be using, so I settled on Gorilla's clear glue because I knew it would be strong enough and also it's clear, so, you know. It seemed like overkill to screw the pieces together, so I used my Ryobi pin nailer to hold it together while the glue set, but also just to be there, just in case. I'm kind of in love with the sound it makes. Hooray, a drawer. I then settled in to cut a lot of copper pipe, which is fine because I actually really like cutting copper pipe. All you have to do is mark your cut line and then use this little pipe cutter to cut it, obviously. The tool works by scoring the really soft copper and every time you turn it around, you tighten it a little bit so the score mark gets deeper. And here it is a little bit closer not in real time. With all the pieces cut, it was time to dry fit and see if I had done the measurements properly. Spoiler alert, I did. Another cool feature of this machine is that it makes it super easy to create greeting cards. I'm a huge fan of getting posts, so I'm thinking that the more I send, the more I'll receive. When you create a free account with the Cricut Design Space, you get access to all of these different designs that are included with that free price. Just click, click, and you're done. Or, if you want to create your own design, you can do that too. I made these cards for everyone that posted videos of themselves with an eyelash filter in the 24 hours after I did. Best of all, all your designs are saved if you ever want to recreate them. I had to make a lot of these. Okay, so remember how I said I had forgotten to cut some of the pieces? I didn't film cutting them because it looked exactly like this, and you already saw it. Luckily, it's so hot and dry here that everything was finished super fast. You already saw this too, so this will be super fast as well. For the handle of the drawer, I decided to use a copper pipe strap. I first pre-drilled some very small holes and then hammered in some black carpet tack nail things. And it looks great! Rather than try to remember which pieces went where, I just left it fully assembled, then took it apart, and then reassembled it right next to itself. That doesn't sound like it makes sense, but you can see what I'm doing. Every time I've done a copper assembly, I've used the same type of glue because it works amazingly well. It is original Gorilla Glue. No sponsor. It has a pretty long work time, and it actually expands as it dries, so if the pipe was loose before, it won't be when you're finished. The two hole pipe straps weren't loose enough for a drawer pull, so I just cut off one of the sides. This is not difficult, but I did hurt myself a little bit. 
But don't worry, I'm fine. So with one side of the pipe strap gone, it allowed me to attach from one side and it was tight enough to hold the pipe and loose enough to move. I am pleased. So just above the drawer was a cubby for paper. Rather than resting on something, this one was actually attached to the upper pipe, again, with pipe straps. At this point, I gave it a little break so that the glue could set up a little bit. I placed the top shelf and then marked on the underside where the pipe straps would go. I pre-drilled small holes to make assembly a little bit easier. Then I screwed on the straps by hand. This was supposed to be the triumphant moment where the big cubby just slides right into place, but it didn't want to go. It's okay though, I fixed it. Because the Cricut Joy is so mobile, I wanted the material to be as mobile as possible. So I made handles. And I added a little bit of extra storage space on the back for the things that were too tall to fit in any of the cubbies. There are a lot of things that the Cricut Joy can do, and I haven't even begun to think of all of them yet. But one thing I know that I want to do is I want to try out the infusible ink pens, and not just for the obvious reasons. So thank you to Cricut for sponsoring this video, and there are links in the description box below if you want to find out more. I also put a link for a YouTube channel that I found helpful when I was looking for tutorials. As always, if you want to know what I'm up to on a semi-daily basis, follow me on Instagram. Give me a thumbs up if you feel so inclined, and leave me a comment if you have a suggestion about what I should make with the Cricut Joy. Or if you have one, let me know what you made with it. Or just leave a limerick. I like limericks. <laughs>